Jesus Christ is probably the most famous documented rebel and revolutionary. He said, I don't care what you guys are saying in the temples. I don't care what the guys are saying out there. I'm going to go and spread love and peace. And I'm going to do cool stuff. And he got killed for doing cool stuff. And he's inspired everyone else. And we saw Tupac get killed. Malcolm X get killed. Steve Beagle. Solomon Mashangu. Marcus Garvey. And we're like, okay, so this is the disease. It's a bad disease. Because on the other side, it's like, no, just sell out. Just make money. Keep the knowledge to yourself and be rich alone. This is The Hustler's Corner. Hey, what's up? Welcome to The Hustler's Corner. Big homie Smuda here. Guys, I told you this year, I'm putting in a lot of content. So first thing we're going to do, straight up to that shop shop sign. And the, uh, I think it's your left bottom <laughs> corner of the screen. <laughs> on the count of one, two, three. Click, 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 click. Thank you. And then go to your right bottom corner of the screen. And then just click that subscribe button. Don't forget to switch on the notification bell. I'm putting in a lot of content this year, guys. I can't believe this podcast has been around for, I think we started in 28, towards end of 2018, 2019. So I think it's 2018. We've been around for quite some time, but because I've been lazy, I record one episode in two months. I'll put out one episode in three months or one episode a month. And that's just come to an end because I'm, I'm glad that now the culture has moved on to the internet. So a lot of people in Talening Tetis, all you hustlers out there who are subscribers, Buddha. We need daily content, actually, not even just once a week. We need daily. I'm working on uh, putting together daily content for you. We put together the massive Metro Studios. The guys are working there. We put together the homegrown. The guys are working there. I need to now go put together the Hustlers Corner Studios, where there's just going to be content creation on a daily basis. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite excited because the brother that I'm sitting with here, we literally just met for the first time. And that's the world we're living in, social media, the internet. Digital media introduces us to all sorts of different content that is pushed out by all sorts of different people from all over the world. And there's just a certain type of content you um, gravitate towards. Some of it will speak to you. Some of it will make you want to follow those people and find out more who they are. And that's what happened to me when I bumped into his content. And I just started following him on all the different social media platforms. And the more he posts, the more he shares his mindset, the more he shares his philosophies, his ideologies. And um, yeah, I just kind of felt he needed to be here and he needs to be known by as many people out there as possible. His voice needs to grow bigger and other people who will see him from here will invite him to other platforms. That's what it's needed because his brand needs to grow. His voice has to be louder because I really do think he's got a thing or two that has literally captured my heart and that has made me identify him as my tribe, identify him as one of those black brothers' uh, voices that we need, especially in our country, Mzanti. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to God Penel, is what I call it. Shabu It's a food. Ukren. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm, uh, I'm extremely, extremely humbled and honored to be in your presence. I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. I think you have an idea. Because people scream your name at places, but I don't think you understand. We, we speak about Tupac a lot. You, a guy like Uzola, you guys are our versions of what Tupac. I see Uzex Bantuin is on the rise yeah, as well as the yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys, there are kids in Makasi somewhere sitting in a dark shack somewhere saying, one day I want to be like Usbuda. The guy got on radio and he didn't have a radio voice. Why so say, I'm going to push whatever it takes. Pandan Majita, push him more fire. I used to listen to you when I was doing honors in accounting. Are you serious? Uh, every single day, the DJ Spoo breakfast show on uh, YFM. Was the YFM days? Absolutely <laughs> amazing. So. I don't think you understand the power that you have as a human being. I remember speaking to a gentleman once speaking about Rick Ross yeah. and saying people like Rick Ross understand the power of music. I know you understand the power of music, especially with your background with TS, but yeah. I don't think you understand the power of your brand and, and how revolutionary it has been to some of the weirdest people, not just in Donas Asekas, there are suburban private school, coconut, even white kids that are actually like, oh my gosh, that DJ Spooka is pretty cool. He's pushing, he's creating content, he empowers people. He, so I'm, I'm very honored to be here. And uh, as you said, I hope I'm going to be joining your tribe and we can find more lions like us, especially across the world and, and change the world for the better. But I'm going to be for the invite and uh, I'm blessed to be here. No, I'm humbled. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's always, I always say, so I'm a radio person. When you, I'm sure when you heard your own voice for the first time, you're like, I will. it was a little bit uncomfortable or you feel a bit weird. And, sure. and I'm sure you guys out there, when you hear your own voice, you're like, or, or a voice note with your voice. So, so when you hear about, you know, just living life and doing the work, when you hear other people, uh, you know, tell you about you, you, you sort of feel a little bit, 
not uncomfortable, but it's like it's, it's some sort of a r- reminder. Who is Penwell? Who's God Penwell? Sure. So I'm from Newcastle in KZN, born and bred there, matriculated there. Uh, I, was a, I was an A student, good black, coconut, above first blackhead boy. Yeah. Uh, from there, I went to Rhodes University in Grahamstown. It's called Makanda now. Oh, before, before before moving to Rosa, I just want to sure. find out Newcastle, ne? Newcastle. Newcastle, did you do a, did you go to a private school, multiracial school, or is it, 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 Sure. So, I think like most people, I was born into a car, uh, My father had taken my mom, fr- he was from Mpopomen in Hawik. Uh, my mom was from Ekufugen uh, in Washbank in KZN. They moved to Matateni because he got a job there as a building inspector. And then I think when I was about five, my old lady was a teacher. Um... Uh, we can now live amongst the whites. So I went to town. Um, my mom was mostly a single mother from a financial perspective because my father was present uh, here and there. But financially, my mom carried myself and my two siblings, my brother and my sister. Um, I've been at Model C schools uh, generally my whole life. I started at college school because we weren't allowed as Otak to study with Tongamla. And then as soon as we were allowed to study with white kids in grade three, which was standard one at the time. Uh, we started studying with white kids. And then I was at a Model C school, never went to private school. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I never studied Ekasi. I remember asking my mom why I never studied Ekasi because I believe in giving back. And if we're constantly moving the best minds to white schools and then moving the best minds to big cities and moving the best minds to New York, they never come back to plow back. So uh, I've, I've criticized her, but I think we have an opportunity even now to still go back because we still have a chance to go back and give back and say look my mom taught you i didn't study here but i just like to give back to the school that gave her the money and the means to take us to better platforms so that was bef- that was yeah newcastle senior primary newcastle high school in kzn and then i matriculated there oh that is so dope and then before we moving to to roads what i'm going to do is i know that this platform uh, exists on on youtube and spotify and all the other buzz sprout uh platform that we distribute it to but uh, i would like maybe as the interview goes you have a small stand uh, and, and shout out to my to my team a small <laughs> stand where we broadcast live this interview because on facebook i literally usually post a link transfer people to to youtube sure. so, if you call up please it's telling you to stream my interviews even if i see your young interview but so maybe if you can just get a stand and then maybe uh let me let me do this quickly guys sorry for everybody else that can afford data or that is on wi-fi i have to think of indona zeta that can't afford inclusivity yeah and give them an opportunity to stream on on youtube and this is the first time it's the first interview i'm actually streaming on on on, on facebook why because i really do think Ugutu Penwell has got a thing or two that might spark you um, to, to change your life somehow or that might just spark you to go do some research somehow and find out um, some things here and there. Okay, let me do this. Let me say the Hustlers Corner SA. Yeah. I'm not worried about I'm just doing it quickly. Just be patient with me. You can fast forward there if you're not watching live. So, I'm not going to do it. Okay, the Hustlers Corner interview, interview with, what is your Facebook? I'm taking you. Penwell the Black Pen. Penwell Space the, Penwell the Black, Black Pen. Yeah. Pen. I think that's my page. I hope it comes up. Penwell, yeah, the, here it is. Yo, 78,000 followers. Hey, bo. <laughs> yo, yo. Do you know, I've actually never been to your Facebook. I, 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 I is small. <laughs> but one day, one day, in Zofiga, I go my millions. Yo, but no, yeah, that. seven, eight thousand followers on I my page. Co- I interact with you on uh, Twitter, on Twitter, sure. on I think Insta, sure. Also on I don't know if it's TikTok, but but it's Twitter and one of those. Yeah, but anyway, sure. Sure. let's go to. Uh, oh, okay. It's Okay, sure. Nice, 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 nice. Sure. The people behind the scenes that create all the magic. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're just Amatulus in front that are shining. Yeah. But the real work. In Donazam, and in Donazam, says to the industry. And Kumala's massive metro, and it's Jalal in Donazam, it's a chance 
the industry is literally evolving so quick. You're yes. not even aware that what you're going to be learning here at Massive Metro. Sure. And this was 2016. Just sure. up the road here, we're still with, um, we used to just have the DJ Spoo Breakfast standing on its own and on a partnership with Times Media. Sure. We're live on Vuma FM, we're live on Rise FM and Pumalanga. Sure. We just had multiple platforms, including so to TV, sure. blah, blah, sure. blah. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I was saying to Lane Donna's Amiti, gents, the world is changing so fast that yes. what you're going to be learning at Massive Metro, if you work here for a minimum, a year, even a year is long, a minimum six months. Sure. What you're going to earn or get here, the value of um, the capital that you're going to get from here sure. is going to put you in levels where degrees 20 years ago or 30 sure. years ago sure. put our, our, our parents in. Sure. And, and I sounded like not even cool me nonsense. Sure. Now in Donazami, most of all, most on all these platforms, whether it's Super Sport, whether it's SABC, sure, sure. Power FM, 702, sure. YFM, Metro FM, Kaya FM, behind the scenes, I'm on the producer, I'm recording content, I'm on air people, I'm a news reader. It's, it's, uh, it's literally kids we were training just now a few years ago. And it just shows you where this whole digital internet thing is going. This is only the beginning, bro. I can only imagine. Uh, Ucho no. <laughs> we entertainment, putting light is on. And then they get picked by bigger what what. I wanted to say one thing before we carry on. Attention capital, which I'd like to think you know. Uh, for a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't really know the depth of who you are. They see the music, uh, they know the books, they know the speaking. I guess maybe unlike me, because I'm still on the, on the rise, they don't understand the brain for now. They don't respect the brain so much. Attention capital is essentially where everything is going. How can we capture people's attention in the easiest, best? And I think that's why you went on Facebook Live. Because you're like, whatever it takes, instead of watching garbage here on the left, on the right, focus here, because this is where we're going to grow your minds. And once we do, find us, work with us, and people like oh, DJ Spoo can put you on and you can become something of a, of a myth, I guess, as time goes on. I saw Birdman talking about Kanye West, that Kanye West stayed with him at some point before he blew up. You just, you just never know what will happen when you begin putting yourself out there and creating the relationships and moving. So uh, I just wanted to speak about attention capital. Puff Daddy speaks about it since we were speaking about content. Yeah. And he was making content before social media He's became cool. been making content. Yeah. Before social media. I think Tapelo Mukwe and I was shooting, a, I've done a bit of TV work. I don't know if you want to touch on that. Sibu Dangtala i a cafe latte ne? na manz. Na manz. put pen on the phone. Dangtala na manz, please. Sure. How funny kaul? It's pushy hell. Ukraine. I uh, know we can Make eat our, afterwards. Oh, we'll eat after. Okay, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just don't. Sure. Uh, Utapelo Mukwena, we were shooting uh, Broken Vows, uh, which was on ETV. And he was speaking about. P. Diddy had released, there was a documentary a couple of years ago. P. Diddy was making content before content became cool. Gary Vaynerchuk, another great guy on YouTube, was making content before content became cool. And the sooner we understand content and the fact that in future, when people look back for files and history, and it's going to be this. It's literally, this is going to be what has become the Bible or Gospels, according to Matthew and Paul. This is going to be it. The Gospel according to Usbu, Hustler's Corner. It's going to be this. So, when I started More Fire, sure. uh, uh, social media wasn't as big as it is now in South Africa. Sure. But I knew. It was coming. I knew that it'll get here. And I knew I'd lost an amazing platform that I've always dreamed of eventually getting, sure. to, which I did. God has been great, and shout out to the SABC. And I'm still friends with, with the SABC. I'm always there. Sure. Sure. They say don't burn your bridges. That's why I can always walk in at YFM whenever I like. Sure. I can always walk in at the SABC whenever I like. Sure. But anyway, to cut the long story short, when I lost that platform, if it was at any other time, sure. some of the people who were saying negative stuff, it would have manifested to become truth, who were saying, yeah. sure. but I knew, Oguti, I've got this. Sure. And the world is changing. Sure. There's Instagram just bought WhatsApp. Face or Facebook just, just bought, bought Instagram. Sure. Facebook just bought WhatsApp. What's it was those days sure. when they were still new. Sure. I think even on Twitter, I only still had a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand followers. Just a hundred thousand. And it was hacked. And I lost that sure. page. I had to start from scratch on Twitter. Sure. To my Twitter page should be very, very, very even bigger. But anyway, sure. I knew Guti, for me to grow this, I have to use this. Sure. And I knew. Because of our history, where we come from Mzansi. By the way, this is not my interview. This is interview. But let me quickly say this. <laughs> let me quickly say this. 
I've always heard of Martin, Martin Luther King. I've always heard of Solomon Masango. I've always heard of um, uh, 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 Abu Lumumba. I've always heard of our great leaders. I've yeah. always heard of some great things in the past that, or some people or leaders that I would have loved to have been exposed to. Sure. I would have been honored to have sat down with them and sure. asked them certain questions. So I was like, where the world is going, sure. I need to film and record each and everything I'm doing. Yeah. Because in the future, there will not be mabare mabare, or, 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 or even if history or, or gets twisted, my videos will be all over the internet. Sure. So that's why I didn't even want to shoot any fancy videos. Sure. I made sure I, I, I grow this on social media. Sure. This is probably now becoming a, if not, if not already, we have not done any evaluation, a hundred sure. million rands brand. Sure. And this is still beginning days, sure. early stages, out of just only this. So it's exactly what you're saying. But just to summarize, those people who are on Facebook, I know we've just tuned you in now. His name is God Peniel. You can follow him on the um, link over there. He was just telling us that he's from Newcastle and Ufunde um, Corner, Bupume Matateni. And then he was just telling us about him um, starting his journey at Rhodes University. That's where he was. Let's sure. continue. I struggle with, I think Kanye West has the same thing. Oh, comparing myself to Kanye. You have to, bro. You're a God. <laughs> you're comparing yourself to God because you are a God. Yeah. A small letter uh, G, you know what I mean? I struggle with having multiple thoughts at the same time because uh, I know we have to speak about roads. I know. As you're speaking, there are so many things I want to touch on in everything you're saying. Go right ahead, um, bro. Go right ahead. But obviously, in the interest of time and, and... No, no, no. There's no time. That's why there's podcast. Go ahead. Go crazy, bro. I need to do my intro, though. Yeah. Right? Go right ahead. Anyways. No, my in. Go uh, ahead. Because listen to Kulman they, 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 they blow my mind and I... Fuck. Am I allowed to swear? It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, Peter Thiel uh, was part of PayPal Mafia. There's a PayPal Mafia with Peter Thiel, Reid Hoffman, who started LinkedIn, Elon Musk, that everyone knows now with Tesla uh, and SpaceX. He's written a book called Zero to One. Amazing book. And he does a speech where he explains that for guys who want to become the next Bill Gates and the next Mark Zuckerberg, you can't copy what these guys are doing. You have to find the thing that no one has found yet. So I wanted to touch on what you're saying about more fire that you needed to be the pioneer. And a lot of kids don't understand what that really means. Who, who is the guy that's going to do the thing that no one knows about yet, but that is actually coming? Whether you've traveled the world and you've seen that, oh, we need speed trains, uh, we need trams, um, people have now moved into this diet. Whoever brought Italian pizza and pasta and Japanese sushi here, who foresaw that I need to bring this thing here because people don't know. I know. Because that's what prophecy is. What informs that Spoon knows that Penel is going to be something great? What informs that Lil Wayne can see that Drake and Nicki Minaj are going to be phenomenal in future? That there's a, there's a girl somewhere in the Eastern Cape who, who sings with a guitar and she's going to blow the music industry and be known as Uzahara forever. What is it in you Going on a tangent. So I went to Rhodes. Uh, first, At I did my PCOM. <laughs> so yeah, I was going to speak a lot about... Uh, anyways. Go right ahead. Bro. So I did my PCOM in accounting and economics at Rhodes University in Grahamstown in Makanda. Uh, great space. Uh, I was with a, a great lady there who was uh, a visual artist. Her dad was a professional visual artist. And at some point, I thought I was going to be an artist myself. Yeah. I've sold over 50 artworks, by the way. Some people don't know that I actually have a skill of drawing and painting. Wow, okay. Um, again, Kanye West. Kanye is an artist. He used to go to a school for the gifted. Um, Adolf Hitler is an amazing painter. A lot of people don't know that as well. Uh, but Kanye says he moved into music because you couldn't turn the art loud enough, which is what people kind of need. Um, after I did Rhodes, I came to the University of Johannesburg to do my honors in accounting. I was signed with a great uh, auditing firm that used to be around here. Now it's moved to Santon. Um, and then after that, I decided to go my own way. You know, I knew I was never meant to be a corporate guy. Spent about three years in banking, working for two of the biggest banks in the country. But I always had a bug that I wanted to create something else. I'd made the mistake, like a lot of people, Stop, here you go. No, Hola. I'd made a mistake like a lot of people of reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I remember a couple of years ago he was speaking. I don't know if it was at the Santon Convention. It was Center, one of our events, yeah. But you were you were there as well speaking. We're um, working with Success Resources, and I've sure. had a chance to, to meet him a couple of times and interviewing him a couple of times and attend a lot of his talks a couple of times. Sure. That was the equivalent of me having read Rich Dad Poor Dad ten times over. Yeah. Because I only only then I went to go read the book. Sure. Yeah. And then I was blown away. But what my experiences of meeting him and just my experiences of him seeing teach seeing him speak, inspire, sure. train people, because I've seen him multiple times sure. and met him and had conversations sure. with the brother. He changed, he changed my life, but then I compared it to me just reading his book. Yeah. I knew that he had written a book that is going to be relevant forever, Yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, and I'm glad that you read that book. I made the mistake in 2006 of reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. A lot of people don't understand the power of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad is a personal finance book, but it's not. It's a book that changes your perspective on how you look at things. The topic is money in the book. But the way Kiyosaki speaks, because in his later books, he speaks about spirituality, he speaks about politics, speaks about the tax system, speaks about propaganda. So I made the mistake of reading that book. And in reading that book, um, he speaks about the McDonald's franchise system. Um, I come from a Newcastle away. I don't know if you've heard of it, but we have a fish and chip shop called Portos, which makes the greatest chips in the whole world, slap chips. And I wanted to take that and replicate it. Fast forward a few years in 2012, I opened my first fish and chip shop in Gandhi Square. It was called Penel's Fish and Chips. Uh, from there, I went into removals, small trucking. I went into meter taxis. Uh, Uber came in, I moved them to KZN, where they called them Apela, Ekasi. So a friend of mine was running them there. Um, I went into loans. I'm a Shout out to Davidson. <laughs> Not I'm a pella, real pella. You guys know what I'm yeah, a no, in, is, the east, right? in the East Rand. In the East Rand, <laughs> yeah. I'm a pella, are the one. Um, went into Ukma Ukshonisa, uh, which is a, a, a very good kickoff business for a lot of entrepreneurs. <laughs> I got burnt a lot. I got burnt. Uh, 2016, <laughs> my business crashed. I recorded a video this morning on, on TikTok sure. saying, um, Seven out of ten times about now, we're looking you going to buy boys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, again, because my mind moves fast. Capitec was founded by Rian Stassen and Yanni Moton of PSG. PSG is an investment company that's invested in Curo, uh, Capitec, Pioneer Foods, and a couple of other great businesses. When you read the book here, Yanni Moton, and then they fired me because they fired him, and then he went and he started PSG, which became a huge business. Christo Visa of ShopRite and Pep is invested there. Johan Rupert is invested there, um, amongst other people. He wrote his book, and in his book, he mentions that they were inspired by Mohammed Yunus Grameen Bank. Uh, Mohammed Yunus has won a Nobel Prize for trying to eradicate poverty through microloans. In Bangladesh, he went around finding what we call stockfells today and giving all mama that make beadwork, make clothing, sell secondhand, the same stuff we have. Amakota, what, what. And it say, I guess this is what government was trying to do with co-ops. And then think Richard Branson tried to do it with Virgin. Um, I know Clover, Afgri, even Falskas, which became Absa, they all started off as co-ops. I think Old Mutual as well. A group of 10 will give you 10,000 each. And as you guys pay the interest, we'll keep giving you more money. And if you read the Crimean Bank, they, they're worth billions of dollars now. It was literally that. So... I was inspired by that and I wanted to be the guy who does something similar in South Africa. I know we've spoken with guys like the guys that have started the People's Fund, uh, which also invests in, in small black businesses. I think Ndutuko shares at Livestock Wealth, where people get to invest in livestock uh, through an exchange. Those are some of the things we were trying to do. Or that, that's what I was trying to do. But my business crashed because we, we believe in the good of people. Um, and unfortunately, people can let you down for a whole host of reasons. The way the system is set up, is kind of biased. Um, I had to kind of rebuild myself and I think in the last two, three years, I figured out what you guys call a calling and your destiny. That like you, like Robert Kiyosaki, um, guys like oh, Steve Beagle, I guess even a guy like Tupac, guys that tell story. I see the Zuma family is doing amazing work now with too much room with the wife, etc., etc. Some of us have got this disease of having to educate and teach outside of a classroom using all the platforms that we can find. Because we know the power that we've gotten from the names that you mentioned, that if someone hadn't written about this guy in history, if someone didn't record Martin Luther King saying, I have a dream, 
someone never recorded Nelson Mandela in the Diba dance, if we never had the internet and got to see the world and the plethora of knowledge that it has, we wouldn't be who we are. So this is our way of giving back that we also want to educate because, again, Tupac says, I may not spark the world, but I know that... No, I may not change the world, but I know that I may spark the brain that changes the world. Because the world can always be better. And the elite and the powerful, because they're always chasing money and power, they end up destroying a lot. It comes back to bite them, which a lot of new money people don't understand. You become wealthy and then you don't know why there's potholes. You don't know why there's beggars. You don't know why you got hijacked. Part of it is you, because you hoarded so much and you didn't give back. Or you didn't empower and educate and tell people, look, Stop living in squatter camps. Go to Emakaya. There's land and grow food. But who's going to say that if not us? So I realized that I, I want to speak. And for the first time this year, I know I posted this on Twitter and you commented. And I guess this is the power of finding your tribe. Uh, in the movie Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps. I don't know if it's Michael Douglas. Talks about a fisherman always sees another fisherman from afar. You can see your tribe. I see it every time I meet with a big Jewish businessman, when I meet with a big Indian businessman, when I meet with big politicians. There's a way that I speak and you see the glint in their eye because they're like, oh shit, this, this was me when I was a kid meeting Oskido. This was me as a kid meeting whoever. And I was being like, it's like I'm so excited. I think I'm going to be the greatest what to art. And it's like, shit, th this kid reminds me of me. And they say it. I met um, the Nando's founders. Uh, Robert Brosen and Fernando Duarte. I met Carlo Gonzaga, who owns Taste Holdings. They brought in Starbucks. He started Scooter's Pizza and then went on to Domino's. They have NWJ J Jewelers. A lot of these guys in their mid-20s had the same fire. They were burning. They were like, I want to do something special. And they met me, a young black boy. And we speak very much about race and racial, but they were like, you're just like us. And we will support you in any way we can. And I think I'm blessed in that what differentiates me, you, other people from others is from a young age, for some weird reason, we'll call it genetics, we'll call it a gift, we'll call it talent, we'll call it a madrozi, we'll call it um, something from, from God or whatever you believe in. We have a curious nature. And because you're curious, you constantly want to know more. And for some people, they know more. They be get PhDs and they become pro professors. For others, they're like, I'm a well of knowledge. What do I do with it? How do I create platforms so that other people can thrive? Because every single great human being in the world is no different to you at all. All they did is they made a decision. They said, I'm going to do it. And they started. And they failed and they got fired and they, everything. And they got kicked in the mouth and they were dragged in the media and they're a scam artist and you're exploiting people. And they're like, I've got this disease and I'm curious and I want to change the world. And when I look at all my heroes, when I look at Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is probably the most famous documented rebel and revolutionary. He said, I don't care what you guys are saying in the temples. I don't care what the guys are saying out there. I'm going to go and spread love and peace and I'm going to do cool stuff. And he got killed for doing cool stuff and he's inspired everyone else. And we saw Tupac get killed, Malcolm X get killed, Steve Beagle, Solomon Matlangu, Marcus Garvey. And we're like, okay, so this is the disease. It's a bad disease. Because on the other side, it's like, no, just sell out. Just make money, keep the knowledge to yourself and be rich alone. Why not do it? Because we meet rich people every day that don't share anything. Robert Kiyosaki could have done just that. He could have created like uh, Dan Pena, these very exclusive clubs where you pay $100,000 and you come and get this unique knowledge. But he said, no, I want, I want the world to see the other side. Because it's something that I've seen out there. And I think... The world could be better if some child in the middle of India that has nothing connects to free Wi-Fi that government has provided, watches a little clip and it's like, oh, DJ Spoo in South Africa, oh. And then he keeps watching. And in 10 years time, he becomes the richest guy in India and he, he builds an amazing company that revolutionizes the world. All because you decided, I want to share with the world, I want to connect. So I think where I am right now is I, I want to I wanna speak to the world. I want to educate and uplift. I want to find my tribe, people that are like me, so we can cool, do like really cool stuff. It's nice to have money. Money allows you to like fly first class and whatever. It allows you to give back. Um, but it's also nice to get out and, and unlock minds. My mother named me Penwell. 
I don't know where she got the name. She says it was in the Bible Encyclopedia. It's actually Hebrew for the face of God. Uh, Genesis where, I don't know if it was Jacob, or someone wrestled an angel. Um, she also named Milungelo, which means right. Our right to live, our right to expression, etc. Uh, my surname is Umlojo Uzita. Undi Mountains, Sholob. From Mpopomini, that's my father's side. My mother was half Indian. Her father was Amin. Her mother was Umyaga from Ewashpang. As I grew older, I realized the power of words, uh, the power of names, the power of identity. I have six children now. Kunzmalang, Africa, Zulu, Kanyez, Shag, Nyam, and identity, and, and you know. And I said, at which point do I name myself? My mother calls me Upenuel or Lungel. What do I call me? And I said, I want to be the source of as much knowledge and wealth as possible. Today we have uh, Google, which has become like Big Brother in The Great Gatsby or in the book 1984. I want to be Google, it's but so I don't want to be called Google. I want to be called God. It's so crazy because I am a God. You are a God. And when we were growing up, we, we, we were told, ah, you know, I, I discovered that basically the spirit that lives in me, you know, and I just had this idea. Yes. Yes. You know? and, and that's that's basically intentional. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's conditioning. What was, that's what was done to all of us. Yeah. With everything that you're saying now, and everything I've been preaching over the past couple of years, I also like saying the same thing. Which is, my mom named me Usbusiso. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm a gift to the world. I'm a blessing to the world, yeah. and I'm blessed to become a blessing. So I never only said, "I am blessed." Sure. I always said, "I'm blessed to become a blessing,", blessing. and that's what that's what comes out of my mouth all of the time. Yeah. And even Nomaban Bangbulis, how are you doing? Sure. I think maybe from ten years ago, from just me saying I'm fine. From 10 years ago, it started changing to yeah. blessed. Sure. You know, and, and, and I like that because I started understanding the power of words. Yeah. Words create. Words manifest your future. And I love the conversation we're having because there's something called penualism. What is penualism? I got goosebumps. Um, the most important video I have probably ever watched on YouTube and that I discovered last year is a TED talk by a guy called um, Yuval Noah Harari. He's an Israeli guy who wrote a book called Sapiens, which documents the history of humankind. Understand that history, textbooks, science, the media, all of it is, is someone's story. It may not be true. So Sapiens is his story. Yuval Noah Harari speaks about what, why human beings run the world and the fact that our difference lies in that Animals live in a, an objective reality. They see leaves and trees and water and mountains like us. We see all of that. But human beings also have a fictional reality that we have manufactured through language and through imagination. Gods, money, laws, human rights. Animals don't have those things. Those things are not real. You can't touch laws. We created them using language. So at some point, outside of that, I was like, what is God? What is the source of power? Is it just violence? Because you know when people can no longer argue with you, they kill you. I realized at some point for a long time it was religion. Religion was the source of you can never go beyond that. Then money came in. And with money, people were willing to sin, break religious uh, prescriptions. So I thought money is God. Money will make a person move from Newcastle to Johannesburg. It'll make a mother go and become a nurse in the UK or in the Middle East. It'll make someone become a sex worker. It'll make you leave Pakistan to come and work like a slave inside a, a hot container 16 hours a day to make a little bit of money. Money is God. But I wasn't satisfied because I was like, I want to be something beyond that. One of the reasons I want to be God is because I want to have the power to influence minds. It's in line with attention capital, owning platforms and unlocking whatever do I want to be a multi-billionaire and become Patrice Christo Visa Johan Rupert the Oppenheimers Elon Musk Jeff Bezos the Ambani family do I want to be Jack Ma and then go around buying politicians setting up media houses and pushing my propaganda it's a lot of work can be done or is there something beyond 
some of the beyond his religion. Pushiri, Lekhanyane, Isaiah Shembe, the gurus in India, Buddha, Jesus Christ, Muhammad. They've already told their story. I want to have my story. How do I tell it? Do I become a prophet of a power that's either out there or in here? Of which I believe God is in you and I believe your ancestors are in you as well. Don't let anyone tell you your ancestors are saying. You need to keep quiet and meditate or pray and listen to self because the chip, the chip, the, the SIM card was given to you at birth with everything. If your ancestors are saying, speak louder, swear, do it, be brave, it's here. No one outside must tell you. And I said, no, I want to be the source. I want to be God. I want to be the guy who, who writes the book and tells the story. And I realized in doing that, that God is actually language. The difference between us and animals is not that we think. Animals think. That's why an animal can climb a mountain or feast on something or stealth. And they can think. A dog can see when you're carrying a stick that you're coming to hit it. And it starts whimpering. And it starts running away. It's language. And to what you were saying, language creates in the mind something that didn't exist before. As soon as I swear, I get censored on social media. As soon as I say certain words, if I talk about a disease that, you know, we're not really sure, that's fine. Once I mention a certain word, it flags. Once I mention someone's name in a certain country and he happens to be a leader, I get jailed or killed. The power of words, the power of language, and if we knew how to actually master language, create new words, we'd speak about Tsotsital, Kulmiskasi, Fede, Kao, Exeo, Krend. Shakespeare did that, created a lot of words for the English language. The people in power use language to manufacture everything else. Language allows you to read a recipe and bake us the same cake a lady in Spain is, cake is baking. It allows Elon Musk to go and copy the, the blueprints of how to create an electric car. Language. Language is actually God, and the, the day we master language and we make it work for us, the same way black people hate Afrikaans now, is the, is the day you actually unlock true power. Language. Is this halal? Is this kosher? That's language. You don't know and you don't really care, but someone said that, and they transferred it into a sticker or a symbol, the swastika of Hitler. You see it somewhere, now it's, it's bad, but it comes from language and story. Story. Narrative. Who's telling your story and what's your story? You spoke about a white God and a white Jesus, Zeus, a white Father Christmas. Father Christmas used to be green, Coca-Cola turned him to red to be in line with their brand as a beverage. Today we, we know Santa is being red. At which point do black people stop alienating Leonardo da Vinci and say, da Vinci is my ancestor as well. I'm an artist. I'm a product of him. Why is he for white people? Elon Musk is South African. He's white. He's, he is also my ancestor. He comes from where I come from. When will I say my ancestors are all the great people that I aspire to, not just dark-skinned people? Yo, now you're giving me goosebumps. I'll <laughs> tell you guys of this little, uh, let me not say little girl, this young sister. I want you guys to go follow her right now on TikTok uh, and share videos that speak to you, that you feel like sharing quickly, based on what you're saying, before sure. I forget. Let me just get it out of the way now and do it now. Uh, her name is, I'll give you guys the name quickly... Go follow a lady by the name of Daniela Nkanyezi Kutz. Daniela Nkanyezi Kutz. Kutz as in K-O-E-T-Z-Z. -Z. If you're not in South Africa, that's K-O-E-T-Z-Z. -Z. Daniela with an A at the end, Nkanyezi, and then Kutz. And then I think her at is, uh, a quick one, let me see her at. Her at is Indigo underscore Kutz as in K O E T. Z, Z, Z. So her ad has got three Zs. Ah, it's exactly what you're saying. Mkanyez is my daughter's name. Oh, is it? Okay, she's a star. Sure, sure. <laughs> a quick one, guys. Go support these guys. Now that I'm plugging Mkanyez, let me plug Impasha. The same way I was plugging Impasha. I'm going to go to the helicopter. 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 Theo, I'm proud of you, boy. Congratulations. We're building other Theos, Konamanj, Mbasa. Shout out to Vaya. Shout out to Indoang. Shout out to all of you guys that are doing your thing. Let's continue. Shout out to, <laughs> shout out to more fire. <laughs> Thank shout you. Shout out to more fire. The only culture that comes up with now is Vula. It comes up. Oh, Koko, 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 Koko,
such a beautiful thing I learned from Daniela while I was referencing her now is she put a post on TikTok yesterday. She says, Senze nina, senze nina. And then she looks at the camera. And then she continues to say, Senze nina, senze nina. And then she stares at the camera. She looks at us. And then she writes there on the caption. She translates it in English. Senze nina. As in, what have we done mm. to deserve all of this nonsense that's happening to us? And then she flips it and puts it in the brackets. We made you. Senze nina. Yes, sir. She says, our ancestors spoke in codes. Senze. Ay, senze nina. Jeez, that's hectic. <laughs> the power of language. Chupra. I was Chupra. listening to an amazing guy that I know you've interviewed, uh, Mbuso Koza. Yeah. Oh. Amazing storyteller. Powerhouse. Amazing singer. Powerhouse. He was speaking about Isangoma. Ngoma. Ubungoma. Isangoma. Ngoma. Song. The fact that we don't understand uh, that's dank education, epistemology, I think, the origin of words. We speak very much at the Latin root. It comes from Greek. A lot of our words and language we don't understand. And that's why I was speaking about mastering language. Once you master language, you understand things like surnames. I'm going to make another video at some point on explaining the way surnames are structured around the world. Because surnames are just identifiers and we've kind of lost it. And in a similar fashion, senze nina, senze nina. A lot of people don't understand that you're holding on so much to a surname, but that was not necessarily the intention of what it was meant to do. And you're meant to evolve. Anyways, that's fine. So, uh, yeah. Mofai and Patla, I wanted to speak about the fact that the more we start wearing our own names and not the names of Europeans and Americans we don't know, we don't know who Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Dolce and Cabana and we don't know those people. Prada, they're great. They've done really well. We're proud of them. They inspire us. But the sooner kids can start wearing Lokshan culture, Danki San, Mpatla, Patu, Drip, that's, that's where you build confidence in yourself as a people. And you can proudly walk the world and be proud. And we've seen it in guys like oh, Black Coffee. And they're proud. Oh, you must say, hello, Tandi Swamazwai. Oh, my Miriam Makeba, we're, we're trying to tell us this thing. When I thought I was going to be a visual artist, uh, Umam Helen Sibidi, she's, a, she's a, a visual artist. She does amazing artwork. You are a visual artist. I hope so. You are. Uh, she was saying, and this is very important. What if you don't make the art, who will? If you don't tell the stories, who will? If you don't make the movies and the series, if you don't lead, a lot of young people are scared of going into the taxi industry. Ah, If you are not the one that's going to fix the roads and be in parliament, who will? The brave, dumb guys are going to do it because they're brave and they're dumb. You're intelligent, but you're a coward. At some point, you have to rise. At some point, you have to rise. I'll stop there. You shouldn't stop. Now. I wanted to mention stop. one more thing. Sorry, Spoon. Go right uh, ahead. Don't stop. Yeah, uh, this is your episode. I've seen this before in some of the Hustlers Corners episodes you've done. Your ability to listen. Highly, highly underrated uh, skill. Uh, obviously, it's a platform here now for us to speak. And it's boring. It's keeping everything that we have inside. But the ability to listen and watch and study. Some of us sit in our rooms on our, on our own, watching YouTube, reading articles late at night. I once explained to a mate of mine who's a mining engineer. Uh, he, he didn't understand why him. His brothers are not doing well. He came from uh, a rural area in the Eastern Cape. And he was like, why am I so successful? Why me? And I'm like, some of us have got something that keeps us up at night. No one is paying us to read the articles, to study the grades. But we listen and we watch. Um, I think that's why people say you must meditate. Just keep quiet and listen. Um, so I, I want to commend you on the power to listen. Um, 
especially because you've got this platform. We've seen a lot of people that have platforms that have to interview people. They end up dominating. All they do is talk the whole time, which sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I commend you for your ability to listen and it inspires me, especially when I'm around knowledgeable people, to sometimes take a step back and listen as well. So I just wanted to speak to that. Yeah, but I'm fair to it's, 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 It goes back to what we've always been told when we were still young and we just never understood what, what it really meant. You must uh, observe and listen twice as much as you can speak. 100%. And that's what it is. You asked me a question about penalism. Penalism is um, a lot of things. For normal people out there, the easiest way to explain it is that uh, it is a religion, it is a movement. Ubabu uh, Izaya Shembe with Isondolama Nazareta decided to fuse Christianity and African spirituality because at the time a lot of African people didn't really want to buy into this religion thing. So he found a merger and he created the Shembe Church which has become very powerful today. A person like Jesus Christ, he didn't build a church but in his honor people created a religion called Christianity named after him. Buddha came from a Wallow family, went into the wilderness to go and discover the world and realized nothing is actually important. And he wrote a book and Buddhism was born. I think I have something to give to the world. I could go and reference and quote everyone else, but I decided that I want to be the source of that. I want to be God. And I decided to create my own belief system. I've got my own, what we call a Bible. It's penalism principles, which documents all the things I believe in. Questioning what's out there, living healthily, uh, recycling things, um, parenting intentionally, being responsible with sex, understanding that there's a place and time for violence because of the world we live in. And it's, it's my way to kind of give back to the world. Yes, it's a cult. Because the true, the true definition of a cult is what were Jesus and them were doing. It's a belief system centered around a person. When they say you're a cult figure, you can't question this guy as a cult figure. Think of Jacob Zuma have been accused of that. The Kim family in North Korea have been accused of that. It's a cult in that sense. But if you've ever watched... Um, I belong to a cult called the, called the Slimes. Come on. Yeah, any pause I to you turn over to Aries. I'm kidding. That's just me being a music fan. I am, I, Shout I am out to Aries. Of, I'm part of your cult, uh, Aries. <laughs> sure. There's a great documentary on Netflix and it says cult plus time equals religion. I don't really want a religion. I just want a movement where people that feel like church is not really working for them, that African beliefs and customs and spirituality is not working for them. People that don't really believe in politics. People that are looking for an alternative home. I want them to plug out of that and plug into what we're doing. And we're looking to mimic what the South African Muslims have done, the South African Jews have done, what the Afrikaner Bruder Point have, have done, and build our own tribe of people that are winning, that are healthy, that are building their own brands and wearing their own stuff, that are growing their own food that live intentionally, that raise their children to become champions and warriors. And I'm trying to be the leader for that. I could have gone into politics. I could have been a multimillionaire. I could have whatever, but this is what I'm choosing to do for now. Um, we'll see where it goes, where it grows and what it becomes. But penalism is my belief system. If I'm the only follower, that's fine. Um, luckily, I've got a whole hundreds of people that follow me for now. What's up? This is Pen Well, the black pen. I'm a thinker, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an author. And damn, I've just been hustled by DJ Smoo and the Hustlers Corner.